you very much. Um, that was Johnny's Gone to France, The Highlanders, Knee Buckle and Lady O'Brien's. We are delighted to be playing for you today as part of the Piping Live Festival in Glasgow. And we're performing for you today from the Library of the Irish Traditional Music Archives here in Marion Square in Dublin. We're delighted to be here. We want to say a huge thank you to Finley for inviting us to perform and also to, to the staff here at ITMA who've made it possible to record this for you today. We're playing tunes that were collected by the Protestant minister, Canon James Goodman, around the area of Munster in Ireland in the 1800s. And we're going to start the next set of jigs with a tune that we believe was composed by Canon James Goodman himself. We hope you enjoy it. continue with a, a piece um little air called Keown Bug Bjog. Keown uh, Dove Delish little 
black haired girl um, and it's believed to be taken from or collected from uh, Tomas O'Canada one of the pipers that uh, Canon Goodman got a lot of airs from and uh, so we'll, we'll start off with that Hi Nicholas and Lisa, it's hey, just lovely to be here with you here at the Irish Traditional Music Archive today. And um, firstly, Nicholas, I'd love if you could take us on the journey of how the Goodman manuscripts uh, came to be published. 
Well, the, the short story, the short version of the story is that James Goodman was born in West Kerry in 1828. He was musically inclined and he began learning music as a teenager and continued for, for the rest of his life as, as a learner and a player. He played the flute, he danced, he sang, and he, more than anything else, was a piper. And he collected uh, music from anyone he came across. He, he says, pipers, etc., which, which would cover a multitude, of course. And in the 1860s, and I'd say um, motivated by the devastation caused by the famine to traditional culture, he began writing out in fair copy all the tunes that he knew and had in his collection. And they're in four volumes. And when he died, he was professor of Irish in Trinity College. When he died in 1896, the four volumes came into the library of Trinity. And um, the first that the wide world knew really about the Goodman music was 1963, when Brandon Brannock started a little magazine called Kjol, and he had an article in that. He published seven, I think it was, tunes from the Goodman manuscripts that he had written out by hand, and he gave a little potted biography of um, Goodman. So that's when people like myself learned that there was such a person as Goodman and Goodman manuscripts. And in the same year, 1963, the first volume of his Kjol Rink in Heren, Ibrahim, came out, and the notes to that refer constantly to the Goodman collection and versions of the tunes that are found in Goodman's collection. So Brendan always uh, had the ambition of publishing the, the Goodman manuscripts, but unfortunately Brendan died well before his time. He was only 73 when he died in 1985. He'd, he'd just begun the, the process. And his friends uh, were all shocked really by his death, but they, they came together and they looked at projects he had and said, well, you do that one and I'll do this one and so on. They were, they were divided. And um, the big one really was Goodman and that was taken over by uh, Brendan's friend and colleague uh, of many years, um, Hugh Shields, lecturer in French in Trinity College. There's a nice synergy there between the, his, his work and the, the, the library there. And he brought it into reality, but working with uh, Hugh all the time was his wife, Lisa Shields. Mm -hmm. So I think Lisa would yeah. probably take over the, the story from yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's such a rich story from, from the beginnings and, and also then the journey to get it actually published and to get it prepared so that the larger community could interact with it. So do you want to um, just take us further then um, on how Hugh and you have approached that and what that was like? First of all, um, Hugh, it was a bit of a learning curve for him, actually, because he was, he was he great. His main field in collecting was song collecting, and he only collected music just accidentally when he was collecting songs. So he ha hadn't any experience, actually, of music editing. But um, he took to it. Uh, he really enjoyed it, you know, I found it interesting and, and challenging. Mm -hmm. So the first volume was self-selecting in a way which made it easier because Goodman himself uh, described um, a certain category of tunes that he had were his own settings from that he had heard from the playing of Irish musicians. And he, he said, I call these, I mark these with a K or DC or JG. Now, he never explicitly says what K stands for. Um, it's the strong anecdotal evidence that his main informant was a piper or an ex-piper, mm. perhaps a singer, I don't know, called Tom Kennedy, mm. who had, was a convert to, to Protestantism and followed um, Goodman and gave him, certainly gave him a lot of stuff. But Goodman only mentions Tom Kennedy by name twice in the collection. Uh, mm. three, three, three songs, he has uh, Voke, Thomas Kennedy, a vocay now could be singing or it could be lilting. He doesn't mm. make that clear. Um, so, um, so anyway, the K tunes were were a, there was a substantial amount of them. There were five hundred and thirty, I think. So that was enough f for volume one. You know, mm. now the second volume was more problematic. There's, there's, there's two thousand three hundred tunes in the book. And it was decided that uh, there would be three categories that would be suitable for the second edition. The first one is tunes 
definitely from oral tradition, uh, because Goodman said so. Tunes that Goodman had copied from manuscripts, provided the manuscripts weren't obviously derived from print. And then the third category was tunes certainly or almost certainly from print. So they would be excluded. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember Hugh coming back quite elated from the National Library one day because he had discovered a manuscript which had belonged to Goodman's friend, John O'Daly, and it was a very big manuscript and Goodman had, had copied a lot of tunes from it and they were almost all from print, okay. you know, because they were close bunting and uh, Holden and different, different mm. things very close. So he was immediately able to exclude all those mm. tunes from the edition. Um, now, another, there was one, another aspect of it. This, you see, this Goodman um, collection is an awful long time in the editing, and Hugh was a long time editing it, and for the last six years of his life, his health was very bad. He wasn't really, you know, he didn't have the mental facilities to do it, and nothing was done, so that kind of really lapsed, you know. So when I took over, um, I... The reason why I took over, I didn't intend to take over at all, but uh, Nicholas <laughs> kind of twisted my arm and said, well, if nothing's going to That's happen it. to this yes. stuff. Yeah. You have all Hughes notes, you have mm. all Hughes annotations, you have all the, 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 the not photocopies, but uh, printouts of the manuscripts, mm. which had been annotated with Brendan's codes and annotated with Hugh, because Hugh had done a lot of work on these doubtful tunes, which might be from print and might not be from print. And, and he had taken a lot of notes and so on. I had all these things, you know, and, uh, and I had his database and I had his indexes. So I kind of um, said, all right, I, I, I accepted with a certain amount of trepidation and I've done the best I could, you know. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, I'm, I'm very curious about um, the initial impact um, of the publication in 1998 and what that felt like and um, and then going on from that, how long do you feel that, you know, the book was out there before you kind of got some resonance of what the music community was doing with it? So, People b began to s s produce a few, couple of Goodman tunes on CDs, you mm -hmm. know. As, as, as Lisa says, gradually the... Um, the, the Goodman tunes began to kind of leak out and mm. people would say, oh, I, I, was, I was playing that at home and this great, this, I, I recognised tunes there in early versions, sort of the embryonic versions of tunes that we're mm. all now uh, familiar with and then there were tunes that nobody had ever seen before, yeah. this side of the famine, because of course this is, this is pre-famine mm. music, but it was gradually getting um, taking getting traction really and people were playing them you'd be at a session and you say what tune is that mm. oh I got it out of Goodman and Great, so on yeah. that and and that mm. kind of uh, snowballed mm. and then your your trio has been great ambassadors for this you mm. know because it's really put Goodman you know front of stage yeah and well thank great, you but yeah. it's just such a pleasure to engage with the collection always every time um, and again like I say with O'Neill it's the same similar thing the focus of Goodman is really it's it to me it's very concentrated yeah. the music um, but like that you, you you revisit it all the time and um, tunes that you've played before kind of can take on a, a, a different right, yeah. hue so um, I think that is that's yeah. something that's really attractive about it and you know it is regional music and it's it's, it's particularly nice to see people from the region, from, from West Kerry, from mm. Goodman's own place, reconnect with these tunes that, 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 are, that they have lost mm -hmm. from oral tradition, but they're tunes of their locality. They can learn them again yes. and, and reconnect and make them, make them live again. So and it has a particular meaning yeah. for people from West Kerry Definitely. and Munster generally, tunes mm. of the Munster Pipers. Absolutely, you know? mm. yeah. Well, I'm very grateful to both of you and to everybody who was involved in making the collection available and it has certainly um, enriched my musical life greatly so mm -hmm. thank you thank you thanks
Thanks a million. We're going to continue now with a, a piping duet, seeing that the tunes were mainly collected from pipers and that we're going out live for piping live. So I uh, think it would be maybe appropriate that we play some tunes Absolutely. on the pipe. So Imer's going to strap on her set made by Makoto in Japan, a great pipe maker, great island pipe maker. And we're going to play three reels. And the first one is called the washwoman and then uh, just to keep it a little bit more topical the aberdeen reel is the second one and the last one is the merry time of easter so three reels and we just get tune up here and get e more stuff nothing better than one set of pipes but two sets of pipes <laughs> um, the next few tunes we're going to play is the first one is kind of a fragment of a tune that's in the second volume of tunes from the Munster Pipers there's two volumes of the book available and um, this this set that we're playing for you today is predominantly from the second volume of tunes and the first tune is a kind of an eight bar fragment that I found 
um, just leafing through the book one day um, in County Mayo on Ackle Island when we were out there for a week and it's called Bale Lukariach and the second tune that we play after it is Rathnoch Avan Vyog and then the last tune is Greg's Pipes which is a reel and it would be common enough in the sense that it sounds like Gardner's reel so one that you might think you recognise but a slightly different version of it
Thanks a million. Uh, we're going to continue now with um, two flutes. Two flutes, yeah. And a couple of reels, actually three reels, starting off with Bonnie Ann. Mm. And then I'm over young to be married or to marry. And the last one then, the Dromola, the, the drum and glass. Okay, so we'll try this. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to continue on um, with an, an another air from the Goodman manuscripts, and this time it's called the Humours of Glen. Um, Mick is going to very kindly change over onto a beautiful C set of pipes, and uh, and we'll take it from there.
Well, Vilkas Emer, Mick Gazifa, Sucht Taxenshot, and Shots to Tashka and Shot Karnak Werfen. So we're delighted to have Emer, Mick, and Eva here in the, in the archive and to hear uh, great music in, in person. This is such a relief in the, the year we put in. Um, we spoke a little earlier, or you guys spoke with, with Nicholas Carlin and Lisa Shields about the journey that Goodman manuscripts went on before they were published. But what I would love to hear from, from you is what are the challenges you face as musicians, as soloists, and coming together in a trio when you look at the two volumes of the Goodman um, publications and how, how do you select tunes and, and what are the challenges you face when you, before performing them? I think it's trial and error, really. Every time you open the book, you find something new. And I think there's a lot of tunes, particularly in the first volume that we found and that we recorded on the first album, that were different versions of tunes we already knew, such as Fáni Gael an Lé, for example, as, you know, the dawning of the day, one of the great marches in the Irish traditional repertoire. But the Goodman version just had some beautiful twists that you weren't expecting. And when you see something like that, it's very easy to kind of give it life, breed life into it off the page. From the tunes we picked from the first book, there, there were definitely quite a few that, at least for me, I had similar versions in my head that I would have grown up playing. Mm -hmm. And in the second book, and that therefore on the second album, which we recorded here in the studio, there was uh, more, there was quirkier tunes and, you know, the quadrille, for example, tunes that most certainly came from abroad, we think, anyway. I think, like, as Eve was saying, you know, in the selection of the tunes, <clears throat> Belief is a, is a great reader, so you'd say, well, you know, play that, maybe play it slightly different, or it's quicker, slower, whatever, and particularly for the slow pieces, you know, um, so if, if you could play them through and you can get a good idea of it, well, yeah, that that's, really sounds nice. But then we have, like, I have... Uh, pages of, of notes at home like that tune I like that tune I like that tune and you go back to it the second time mm, no, not really and then Emer come up and say well actually it goes well with this one here so it, you're kind of going from first of all the tune selection and then maybe the instrument selection and then the speed like do you want to play them slow do you want to play them fast do you want to kind of change them a little bit and even the changing, you know, from C sharp C natural F natural F sharps and again you know okay maybe the good, the good man forget to put in the, or did he, you know, misplace the C sharp or C natural? Or do we just go by gut instinct and say, well, look, this is what I think for us it should be. Or at least that kind of, it doesn't grate on our ears if you play it that way. And then that's again going by what we have in our own heads. And we didn't always agree on, no. on these things, you know. <laughs> I think there's a few, yeah, that's, that, that's really, you know, it was very organic and there was no kind of rules around it. But I think we all pretty much were very honest in our approach to the tunes in that we would say, uh, w with all due respect to Goodman, we would point out the bit that wasn't working for us and maybe change that and, and to try to mould the tunes into a way that worked for us, um, both to our ears, but also in the playing of them. And sometimes the tune was not working on its own, but when you put it with something else, it really took off, it took life then. Um, and so in, in lots of ways, we're not, we're not being faithful to every single note that's on the page or every rhythmic um, dynamic um, in, in the music. We're more interpreting the tunes as we learn them from the page. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's really interesting when you have the tunes that you know other versions of and then this new life is in them because there's a little turn or a note or a phrase that's unusual to us. Um, and it sometimes can really sound very different from how traditional music is played today. So there's an atmosphere in that sound. There's an era, there's a, I, I can detect that sometimes. And then there's the other challenge, I suppose, that. Of, of playing the tune that you've never heard before. And there's a freedom in that as well as a challenge because you're not uh, programmed to play it in a particular way because you heard that's how you learned it. It was really fast when you learned it from whoever or whatever uh, recording um, and you're kind of almost pushed to play it like that. We, we didn't have any anything to go on with those brand new tunes that exist in Goodman, which is really exciting. 
Are there more tunes there that are that you're looking forward to playing in the collections? I personally, I'm going back to Volume One again because I know there's, I know definitely there's stuff in there that I, yeah. I haven't really explored. I think if we were to do another recorded project, it would be slightly different to the two we've put out already. We had, you know, the first album predominantly from the first collection, the second album predominantly from the second. We left so many tunes behind that there just wasn't space to record. Mm -hmm. And if we were to go back to them, some of them were slightly quirkier. A lot of them were not fiddle friendly, may I add, because they they are piping tunes at the end of the day. Um, before you finish up, would you would you mind uh, playing one of the more quirkier <laughs> t- selections? I believe you, a selection of polkas lined up to, to finish this concert for us. Yeah, well, funnily enough, there's not many polkas in the collections. And the second polka was written in the book as a reel. But uh, poetic license has taught us to um, never take it for granted if a tune has a particular title. So that became a polka as well. And... Uh, works pretty well yeah and there's no no titles I'm just real polka so that's that's all that's in the book so that's that's what we do great well, th- well thanks so much and that's been really Thank insightful you. for for me and hopefully for other people watching as well when we go to search for tunes and in, in goodman's collection but in other collections as well i think that uh, your, your advice there is is greatly appreciated <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, <laughs>